Hello and welcome to the final week of this lecture series. The final step of the DMAKE process is known as the control phase. In this phase, we aim to control the performance of the process and to ensure that the performance gains made are institutionalized and regularly monitored. This is achieved by means of the control plan. Any deterioration in the process performance should be rapidly detected and a plan put in place to quickly get to the root cause of the problem. In this phase, we will illustrate the use of control charts to monitor the critical metrics of the process. We will also show how these charts can distinguish between common cause and special cause variation. In this phase, all remaining work on the Six Sigma project will be completed. Before and after data on the key process metrics will be compiled, the financial benefits will be quantified of the Six Sigma project, and a documentation package will be completed and presented to the process owners when the project is transitioned. A process control plan will be put in place to ensure that the gains that were made during the project will be institutionalized and maintained in the future. A system for monitoring the solution will be put in place, and this is often by means of control charts and also known as statistical process control. A list of opportunities where the results could be applied in other areas will also be identified. In the control phase, a control plan will be developed. In addition, the control plan will identify how the process will be controlled in the future. This is typically by means of a control chart, and statistical tools are used to develop the control chart. The control plan is the final step in the successful completion of Six Sigma project, and it ensures that the gains that are made as part of the project are maintained. It also ensures that consistent performance of the process is maintained into the future. The control plan will list the specific process activities and the variables or the risks affecting them as well as their specifications. It is a centralized document that keeps track of all significant process characteristics such as specifications, the measurement methods, sample sizes that are used and the frequency of inspection. The actions will also be identified that are required to maintain the process in its desired state. The responsibilities of the individuals will also be identified as part of this plan. This plan will be transferred to the process owners as part of the final steps of the Six Sigma project. A control system is really a feedback loop. Here we see a process control system and we have a process and the process consists of, of the man, the machine, the materials and the methods. The control system is represented by this feedback loop. This process produces output. At regular intervals we will gather data on this process output and we will assess this data. We will gather statistics on this data and we will observe and use this data to, to see and assess whether changes are necessary to the actual process. By doing this, this represents a feedback loop and the result of this is to improve the process output. Any variation in the output is identified very quickly and changes are implemented to bring the process back on track. This is often referred to as statistical process control because we're gathering data and using statistics to actually control the process. The method by which we're going to do this will be the control chart. Let's look first at the causes of variation in a process. Common cause variation refers to the many sorts of chance variation inherent in any process. Here we see variation that's occurring over time. Assume this is the variation at 8 o'clock, this is the variation at 9 o'clock, this is the variation at 10 o'clock. We can predict what the variation at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock is going to be because our process is predictable, it's stable, and this variation will exist unless we take further action. Common cause variation exists in everyday life. An example is the writing of our signature. If I take a number of transparencies, and write my signature on them and overlay them one on top of the other, the signature will not be exactly the same. However, it is predictable and this predictability allows any check that I write to be accepted. It allows any document that I sign to be accepted, but not every signature is identical. Another example of common cause variation is the length of time it takes us to get to work every morning. There are many sources of variation which delay us. This would be the number of cars on the road, the condition of the traffic lights, the weather conditions, but typically the length of time it takes us to get to work is predictable and it's generally stable. 
a process with common cause variation is said to be in statistical control. There is also another type of variation called special cause variation. And this type of variation is extremely unpredictable. Here we see an example at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. It's impossible to predict what the distribution is going to be at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock and so on. This special cause variation refers to the source of variation causing unpredictability and inconsistency in the process. It's unpredictable, it's irregular, and it's going to remain unless we try and identify the root cause of it and resolve it. If we take the example of writing my signature. If I break my finger, then my signature won't be the same. Breaking my finger has caused unpredictability in the process of writing my name. So in this way, it's unpredictable, and it's irregular, and if I try and repeat my signature with my broken finger, it's not going to look exactly the same. I could write my signature 10 times, and each time it look different. So it's unpredictable, it's irregular. A similar source of unpredictability arises in our drive to work. There may be an accident on the road, and the road may be blocked. We may encounter a puncture, and we will have to fix the puncture, the length of time it takes us to get to work in that situation will be irregular and it will be unpredictable. A process that contains special cause variation is not in statistical control. So we have the situation where a process is in statistical control with common cause variation, but with special cause variation it's not in statistical control. This concludes Lecture 6, Part A of the Six Sigma, the main control phase. Thank you.